Imagine getting paid up to $20,000 just to become a digital nomad. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through two ways to get paid to work anywhere in the world. I recently came across a list with an interesting pitch. Digital nomads can get paid up to $20,000 to move to these cities. And while these cities are in the United States, there are a number of countries around the world that are rolling out digital nomad visas for anyone who wants to work there for six months, a year, two years, even five years they're talking about now. And in some cases, they will even waive any kind of income tax as long as you're not making your money from within the country, i.e. from a local employer. And so there are lots of different ways that digital nomads are going to be paid to move somewhere else. I'm gonna talk about two in particular. Number one is direct compensation, and number two is indirect compensation. If it's your first time here, my name is Andrew Henderson, I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors put together the legal puzzle pieces to reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets, increase their freedom with second passports and second residences and homes around the world to basically live freely in an unfree world. You can learn more about that at nomadcapitalist.com and you can learn about our biggest and best offshore conference called Nomad Capitalist Live as well. We'd love to see you there. So uh, here's the headline. Let's talk about direct compensation first. There are places, if you are living in the United States, that will pay you to move there, and let's just go through the list. Uh, why are they paying you, by the way? Because they're following the principles that we talk about, which is governments and places should be just as competitive as sushi restaurants. If you go to a sushi restaurant and you get food poisoning and you're in bed for the next three days, you're not going to that sushi restaurant again, I'm betting. And so why do you keep going back to, or why do you keep staying in the same city, the same state, the same country that keeps raising your taxes, that keeps treating you worse and worse? Why do you go there? Is it the best place? Are you getting the best value for your money? Are they doing the best job to suppress inflation? Is it best? Probably not, but you stay there despite all the comments from people who are fed up with it. Anyway, uh, here's number one and two. Morgantown in Lewisburg, West Virginia. Uh, you can get $20,000 in compensation just to move to Morgantown or Lewisburg, West Virginia. That's 12 grand in a cash stipend plus undisclosed gifts and incentives valued at $8,000. Undisclosed gifts and incentives must be present to win. Uh, that's number one and two. Number three, Greater Rochester, New York. Applicants who live more than 300 miles, about 500 kilometers from downtown Rochester can relocate within six months of acceptance. They can claim a $10,000 relocation incentive, I guess that's in cash, and up to $9,000 in home buyer's incentives. That reminds me, I had a friend who bought a house in the United States like just after the recession started back in like 2008. And the government was rolling out this 8000 I think it was $8,000 tax credit where you bought a house and they gave you $8,000. And I'm like, oh, you know, $8,000. But I didn't do it because I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't want to buy a house now. I waited until, what, a couple years later, the market totally flattened out, it bottomed. It was, in the, it was in the tank and I bought a house. No tax credit, but I paid about like 20% less for the house than he did. And that's kind of what I think about. Um, still friends with that guy, by the way, which proves you can be friends with people even if you live in other continents. But $9,000 in home buyers incentives to live in greater Rochester, New York, sounds like that $9,000 will be eaten up by the fact that people are leaving greater Rochester, New York. I don't know who's buying that house. Uh, number four, Southwest Michigan. Applicants who work for an employer located outside of Michigan can take advantage of a $10,000 mortgage incentive if you buy a house above 200 grand. Again, having grown up in the, uh, the greater Cleveland area, I don't think that real estate's appreciating nearly as fast as other, I think that's on the list of uh, places that were 448, I think, US cities where property is still below global, uh, the, uh, the recession levels. So if you pay, if you, inv if you buy a $200,000 house in Southwest Michigan, you're probably gonna end up giving the, the $10,000 mortgage incentive back pretty quickly in just to make it a bad investment. And five grand if an applicant's child is enrolled into the local public school, so that's cool. Uh, number five, Noble, Noblesville, Indiana. Applicants can relocate within six months of acceptance and have a home within city limits and take advantage of a $5,000 stipend for relocation. With inflation the way it is, I can imagine that U-Haul ain't cheap these days. Uh, as well as access to a co-working space valued at three grand, membership to the local golf club worth 1,400 bucks and a $500 health and wellness stipend. So uh, your golf, your hair, your nails, and your desk are taken care of and they'll throw in five grand for uh, moving your furniture in, in Noblesville, Indiana. Montpelier, Vermont. No barriers to apply for their program, which is worth about 15 grand. That's five grand per year for two years. So $10,000 in apparently cash compensation. 
and up to 7,500 bucks for those who become full-time employees of a business based in Vermont. So they're looking for people to come and be employed in Vermont, whereas a lot of these places are looking to say, hey, bring your job where you can work anywhere, bring that income here. We'd love to have you buying food at our restaurants and, and buying real estate, et cetera. Newton, Iowa, once called the washing machine capital of the world. Well, uh, here we come. Uh, this Midwestern city is now the site of the Iowa Speedway and home to a thriving arts community. You get 12 and a half grand. That's the estimated value of the incentive. $10,000 in cash and then discounts at local shops. That's kind of like the, the coupon book. Uh, if you uh, buy a house in Newton, valued at $190,000 or more, they give you the cash. Uh, so those are some of the places in the uh, United States. I'm not sure why they, they call it uh, 20, uh, 20 places. So those are places in the United States where they will pay you up to a cool 20 grand in your hand to uh, relocate. Now, one of the things that you have to consider with some of these places is um, most of these places that I'm aware of have a state tax. In fact, all of them have a state tax. And so maybe you're already living in Florida or Nevada or uh, New Hampshire or Washington, uh, or somewhere that has a more favorable tax climate. You're, you're gonna pay this 20 grand back if you're making $100,000. It's not gonna take you very long to do that. And so the greater issue to me is, I see a lot of folks who are looking to move within their country. Somehow moving within your own country is acceptable, right? I'm moving from California to Phoenix. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. I'm moving from California to Nevada. I'm moving from Michigan to Florida. Right now, everyone's moving to Miami. People are moving, moving to Austin. Nashville's on the radar. Uh, why? Well, because there is no state income tax in those places, because the weather's better, it's more free, there's a community developing there. Uh, parts of Wall Street are moving down uh, south. I mean, lots of stuff is moving down south. And so it's comfortable. But here's the issue. Here's why I wanted to share this with you. Uh, I'm sure the people in Noblesville, Indiana are delightful people. I, I grew up in that part of the country and I still love talking to people from that part of the country. But I will tell you with certainty that you couldn't pay me enough to live in Noblesville, Indiana. I would go nuts. Montpelier, Vermont, maybe a little bit, but I think, that, I think I'd still go nuts. Newton, Iowa, if, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure they're, I really mean it, they're wonderful people. Uh, but I'm not living in the washing machine capital of the world, okay? If that's your claim to fame, count me out. And so if you live there and you're from there and you like it, I'm happy for you. And I'm not trying to denigrate it, but I'm saying the fact that these places are trying to attract people, right? is an indication that perhaps not a lot of people would want to move there. And so if, you're gonna, if you would consider moving to greater Rochester, New York, and taking out potentially more tax liability to get $19,000, why don't you consider the wide open array of places to live in in the other 251 countries and territories around the world? People have asked me, why didn't Andrew, when he was an American, move to Puerto Rico? Isn't it so much easier? You can keep your US citizenship. The answer is very simple. I didn't really want to live in Puerto Rico. Nothing wrong with Puerto Rico. We've helped a number of folks go to Puerto Rico and take advantage of tax incentives there. But for me, um, at the time being single and, and probably not you know, dating people in the US, uh, at the time just not wanting to live there, um, you know, wanting to explore, I always had a fascination with Asia, uh, I always like Europe, I mean, those were my places. I didn't want to you know, restrict myself by going and living in Puerto Rico. If you want to, that's cool. And if you want to go and live in, in uh, you know, Southwest Michigan. I don't know if that's the name of the city. It's, it's written like it's the name of the city, Southwest Michigan. If you want to live there, I'm not going to judge you. But if you can move to Southwest Michigan, you can move to anywhere in the world that you want. And if you move outside of the United States, they may not give you cash, but here's what they will do. They might say, hey, Uruguay, 10-year tax incentive. Uh, they might say in Portugal, hey, 10-year NHR program. They might say uh, in countries like Malta, or Ireland, hey, whatever money you don't bring in, eh, that's your business. Uh, they might say in countries like the UAE, we don't want any money at all, we're not taxing on anybody. There's numerous you know, tax-friendly, reduced tax incentives, whatever the case may be. Now, if you're an American, you're still gonna have to deal with reporting your income to the US, and depending on where you go, there may be some conflicts to work out, or you still may owe a little bit of something to the US, but you can still dramatically reduce your taxes. So let's just say you make $200,000 a year. Uh, you moved to Noblesville, Indiana, your taxes aren't changing. Your federal tax, your social security tax, your Medicare tax, none of that's changing. The state tax may go up a little bit, may go down a little bit. Maybe we're talking about five to $10,000 uh, total savings or total extra expense, depending on where you're coming from over the course of a year. If you were to move to somewhere outside of the United States, by the way, okay, let's count Puerto Rico in this. If you wanna keep it in US territory, add Puerto Rico on the list. You can, rather than you know, increasing or decreasing your taxes by a few percentage points, how about you reduce them by 80 to 
and you can have a wider array of choices. You don't have to go to Southwest Michigan. You don't even have to go to Miami. You know what? There are places that have the same weather as Miami that have the same, oh, whatever you say about Miami. You want the food, you want the beautiful people, you want the amenities, you want the weather, you want the proximity, whatever you want. I promise you can find it somewhere else. And I promise you can find it in a place that doesn't have the US federal tax burden because just reducing a few percentage points in the state tax doesn't really help you. And so uh, there are places that are paying you to come cash in your pocket, coupon books for the local bar. But there are other countries where their tax system is set up to benefit you in a much greater way. Obviously, we're working with folks uh, who are making hundreds of thousands, many hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars a year, or who have very substantial net worth, and they're going to benefit dramatically from moving overseas, especially if they have active businesses and they're generating active income. Don't move somewhere because they're dangling five or 10 grand in front of you. Go to the place with the maximum incentive. If you're moving because you're tired of taxes, then lower your taxes. Don't lower them 10, lower them 80%. And so this is kind of the, this speaks to the, the mindset of people where they want to find something that's close enough. Listen, you can move to places in Europe where English is the main language and you will dramatically reduce your taxes. And I'll, I'll bet you this, for a lot of folks that I talk to, they like the cooler weather of somewhere like in Ireland. And if you want the Mediterranean, Go to a place like Malta, go to Cyprus, go to Portugal. Italy has a tax incentive. Greece has a tax incentive, for heaven's sake. Wouldn't you rather live somewhere on the islands of Greece than living in Montpelier, Vermont? For most people, the answer is yes. You want to live in the Caribbean because you want to be in the same time zone? Great. You got the Cayman Islands, you got Turks and Caicos, you got the Bahamas. Go and get yourself a citizenship by investment. Give yourself a backup plan. Pay for it out of the savings that you're going to get by moving overseas. Go and live in Antigua. Go and live in St. Kitts and Nevis. Keep your U.S. taxes simple by not having a tax bill somewhere else. Just, a, just one idea. So don't settle for what seems like the best deal. Don't keep yourself within your own country. That's what people are doing when they're moving even to Austin, Miami, and Nashville. They're taking a little bit of cash because it feels more comfortable. And there's a whole wide world open out there of places that give you a lot of the same benefits at a much lower price.